gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of It's Me Speaking to You. I am your host, Jeffrey Wilson, coming to you from the gateway to the west, St. Louis, Missouri. Folks, we have uh, another heater today on the on the program, another big of another big wig in the world of professional wrestling. I'm uh, always I've, everyone knows I'm a huge fan of fan of professional wrestling, and I've been a huge fan of this gentleman. He is. Um, the, the guy's traveled the world. He is also another cat. It's stacking f- frequent flyer miles. Um, he's standing approximately 6'2", 275 pounds. Please forgive me if I massacre this, sir. From Guyania, Guyania, Puerto Rico. Um, ladies and gentlemen, he is the Global Wrestling Federation champion, the King of the Ring champion in Mexico. He's held numerous titles throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the King of Chaos. Ricky Cruz. Ricky Cruz, thank you for joining me on the program, sir. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Let me tell you something. You just butchered I know. my hometown. I it's did, called me. Guayanilla. Guayanilla. I apologize. I, 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 apo- <laughs> I apologize, sir. Um, yeah, so, you know, obviously you've been in the business for a very long time, sir, starting, uh, it looks like, uh, at around 1999. And like I said, you've been traveling the world. And recently been doing a lot of traveling in uh, Puerto Rico and Mexico. If you don't mind, sir, uh, fill in our listeners a little bit on how you got started in the business of professional wrestling. Well, I got started in 1999. I was um, still in the Puerto Rico uh, National Martial Arts team. And um, I went to one of the tournaments in the island. and, uh, And a wrestler was invited to the tournament to see the competitions. And... When I won my gold medal, I got to talk to him, and and he said, "Do you like wrestling?" And I said, "I'm I'm, I'm obsessed with it since I'm like four years old." <laughs> so he offered me the opportunity to start training. Later on, I got to meet Savio Vega, uh, and Savio um, told me the same thing: if you want to train, and and because Savio it's, has a background in martial arts, so he he you know saw the opportunity to get someone like him in it. And he gave me the opportunity to start training at the Kayentai Dojo in Puerto Rico, which was run by Taka Michinoku, uh, Super Crazy, and Paulo Marquez. And uh, and I got the opportunity to start training with them. Uh, I was already doing, like, little indie shows by that time, but that was my real, real training to become a professional wrestler. Um, <clears throat> from then I started in IWA. And the rest is history, man. After IWA, I went to WWC, which is Carlos Colon Company in Puerto Rico. Um, stayed there for like a year or two years, and then went back to IWA. You know, a lot more experience and whatnot, and ended up staying in there for like nine years. And after that, I started traveling. Well, and you're, you're glossing over some pretty big names here. Savio Vega uh, was once uh, WWE superstar, if I'm correct. Yes. Uh, and Carlos Colon. I mean that guy. I mean his his epic battles with Abdul the Butcher are absolutely lore. I mean when I would flip through all the wrestling magazines when I was a kid, they were always rife with the just bloody crazy wars between Abdul the Butcher and and Carlos Colon. So when you say you've been trained by Carlos Colon, that is uh, that is a pedigree that definitely uh, definitely carries some weight. Well, they they. Um... In a way, I would say they passed the torch. They actually they started calling me the ultimate student of wrestling because when I went to WWC, Carlos Colon brought me in and uh, started teaching me his finishing move and started. Uh, they started showing me and him training together and you know um, stuff like that. When he passed the figure four, well, everybody made a big deal out of it because you know it's his finishing move. It's just, you know it's the legacy of the figure four that Carlos Colon does in Puerto Rico. Then when I go back to IWA. Savio Vega has the same uh, uh, issue. He starts training me and training with me in martial arts and uh, starts uh, teaching me how to use the, the the Cobra, which is his finishing move, which is a version of the Million Dollar Dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, and same thing. So I got to learn from both of them uh, their finishing moves and, and everything they, they do in the ring. The only one I couldn't do it was with Invader 1. Uh, which I wanted to because those are the three biggest names in Puerto Rico, um, in my opinion. Uh, Savio Vega, Carlos Colon, and and Invader. One that are they were active at the moment because there's a lot of big names. You know, Miguel Perez, uh, Estrada. Uh, there's a 
Pedro Morales. There's so many big names of wrestling in Puerto Rico, but those are the, the three active wrestlers at the time. Okay. Did you say Pedro Morales? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was, um, I think he was the first, um, he was the champ, wasn't he, in WWF yeah. at the time? Yes, sir. The first Latino uh, world champion, I, I believe. Yeah, I believe. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was, um, I think, intercontinental champ before that. And then, uh, yeah, he was uh, Pedro Morales. That's that's when I first started watching wrestling, too, back in the WWF days. Uh, and Pedro Morales, absolutely. Um, well, cool, man. And um, well, like I said, folks, that's uh, this, guy's, this guy's tried and true. So his pedigree is... Um, Definitely stands up to pretty much anybody in the business today, quite frankly. Um, uh, like I say, he's been traveling quite a bit lately. Uh, tell us about what you've been into, um, your travels down to Mexico recently, and you recently got the uh, the King of the Ring belt down in Mexico in your travels. Tell us about that. Yeah, I, w I went in April. Uh, I was supposed to go for a week and end up staying like six or seven weeks. Um, Mexico, it's like my second home. It's, it's always great to go back to Mexico. I love the style of wrestling over there. It's so different than the one in here in the States. And, um, you know, wrestling in Puerto Rico, it's a fight. In the States, it's entertainment, and in Mexico, it's religion. That's how I see it Right. Uh, when it comes to wrestling. Um, I had the opportunity to come in the tournament, the King of the Ring tournament, um, and at the end, you fight 30 guys, and you have to eliminate. Not by throwing them up the rope, you have to win by two, four of submission, uh, it's like a huge gauntlet match, let's put it that way. Oh, wow, so and, it's not uh, a battle royal, like over-the-top rope. No, not at all. You have to beat every single guy by pin for submission. And at the end, the last one standing, it's going to be the king of the ring, and that was me this year. Actually, I'm the first foreigner in Mexico who wins it twice uh, ever in the 40 years that the company has been having uh, this tournament. Wow. You don't stop, man. Can't stop. Won't stop. Um, I also uh, in my in my uh, show prep here. You um, during your time in Puerto Rico, you kind of had an opportunity to uh, try out for the FCW, the Florida Championship Wrestling, which is the developmental company uh, for the WWE. And you unfortunately got an injury. Uh, what what happened there? Yeah, That's that day I will never injury, forget it. Like. <laughs> I will never forget it. It was December seventh, two thousand and nine. Um, I went for a date that will a week of training. Uh, yeah, a, a week of training and and, uh, and a tryout with, uh, with WWE at the end of the week. I got the training during that week. It was great. Everything went well. I got to step in the ring with with great legends, in my opinion. You know, Smiley, uh, Norman Ricky Smiley, Steamboat. Uh, yeah, Ricky Steamboat, um, Pritchard. Nice. Uh, I forgot the name of Skin, the guy that did Skinner. Uh, I can't forget. I, anyway, uh, you take, there were you, so many guys over there. You give uh, you not, give a, a Ricky Ricky Steamboat type uh, arm drag, sir. I've seen you work. You give that nice deep arm drag with like a the flawless takeover. Not well, he's he's one of the reasons I'm in wrestling. Like him, Savage, um, Paul Ondor, guys like that are the ones that I always admired. So I try to copy a little bit of everyone that I really admire and keep it as a tribute. <laughs> so, well, growing up as a kid, if you see my matches, because if you see my matches, I do the arm drag from Stevie, uh, from uh, Steamboat. I do the elbow drop from Savage. You know, like there's there's a couple of guys that. Yeah, we're gonna post. Really we're gonna mind. post uh, a link to a couple of your highlights, uh, just to, so people you know who might not have seen you uh, work can can see some of your moves. I mean, the, the the guy can move, and he's uh, definitely definitely got some skills. Um, speaking of the WWE, uh, they most recently had a uh, pay per view. Were you able to catch that? The one the yesterday, Night of, Night of Champions. Well, I watched it uh, as soon as I, I I just came from Puerto Rico. Oh, that's right. Um, you were traveling. You were traveling. Yeah, but uh, but I, I got to watch it yesterday. Uh, when I woke up, I sat down and watched it because I heard that supposedly, and you know, supposedly uh, Sting got hurt. Yeah. <clears throat> so I wanted to see it. But, uh, yeah, I watched it. So, I mean, not just that. Um, I, got, I got heat with the WWE product. Now, what are your thoughts on the WWE product, and particularly – how they're using Sting, like to have him lose in Mania last year and then like pump up some new angle with the champ now who's the first one to ever hold two belts 
it just like kind of takes some luster off him. But and then to have him lose again, I don't know if that loss was directly related to the injury or if that injury was a work or a shoot or whatever. What do you think about the WWE product now, and particularly how they're using Sting? Well, I, I think the company is thinking about the future so and the guys. new fans that they want to and 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 to create a future with the new fans that are coming in, mm-hmm. and they're trying to. Not let the the old fans die out, you know, like you know, but um, life? yeah, um, in a way, I think so. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. I, I, there's not a lot of the new guys that I would really like get behind. And oh, I gotta see Rocks. I gotta see how this guy's wrestling or what yeah. he's doing next. Um, there's there's only a few um guys that I, that I, Valor. It's one of those guys that I, but I but I've met him in in Mexico and I know he's amazing mm-hmm. if people think he's amazing in, in WWE they should have seen what he did before and who are you speaking like, of again uh, Valor okay and um, I think he's a champ on NXT now I, I know I don't remember I, to be honest with the, with the traveling I've lost a little bit of the of the product I haven't seen it Kevin knows it's a, a guy that I, I always wanted to wrestle when he was in Ring of Honor um, that was one of my dream matches I think he's great. Yeah, he's the new U.S. champ now. Yeah, I see that. Oh, I'm sorry, and, I'm, and I'm glad for him. I think Inter- he deserves it. Intercontinental, I'm sorry. Intercontinental. Yeah. Um, I think he deserves it. He's a, he's a great heel. And so, it's, it's, as far as Sting goes, are you do you have any issue with what, I mean, like, I guess you kind of spoke to it, that they're kind of just bringing in a new product, kind of at the expense of the old school, but are you okay? I don't know how much well, you follow I think, Sting. I think, I think all the old school... Uh, should start helping create the new ones. Uh, and, and if you see that didn't happen for a while, and that's why I think it's hurting the business as of today, that we don't have the big stars or the big names with the new guys because all the old school guys from before didn't prepare that next class, you know, that next group of wrestlers to be the top guys, to be the, the names. Do you think so, some of that has to do with the elimination of, because like, I hear a lot of the old school guys, Jim Cornette and everything, talk about the territory system and how that driving up and down the road with your, your Harley races, your Briscoes, your old school guys sitting under the learning tree, for the lack of a better term, isn't around anymore. So you got kids who really don't know know the business from a physical work standpoint or a psychological standpoint. What do you think of not, not, not only that, but um, even... Not only in the drives, but even in the ring, you know, um, I think a lot of the old school uh, uh, wrestlers wanted to protect their spot, mm-hmm. so they wouldn't teach or they wouldn't help new talent so they didn't take their spot. Right. And, you know, in wrestling, at least I was taught and I had the vision that you're here to for the best of the product, not right. for your own and you know, I'm not a lot of people <laughs> um, agree with me but um, I'm always trying to help the product and try to help the area not just me sure well and honestly I mean as somebody who's grown up watching wrestling and then gotten to know a little bit of the business I, I'm not one of them who profess to be know it all but um, I think it's just as um, I don't know I, there's just kind of so much going on that people don't don't really kind of get that uh yeah, I don't know. Um, as far as uh, let's see, a, a gentleman recently down in uh, down in Mexico, there was a there was an accident with a, a gentleman with uh, by the name of Pero, and I think you said you knew him. Yeah, Pero, how are you? Yeah, how I mean that was uh, looking back on that, it was such a weird, weird freak accident. You know what I mean? That was I was. Mysterio's probably given that that drop kick ten million times, and Perro's probably taken that drop kick ten million times. What did you see in that 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 was uh, that did something to him? Well, oh, it's, that's the thing. You can take a you can. <laughs> I I was in martial arts for ten years. I've been in wrestling for six years, uh, and at the moment, I'm just giving you an example. And that threw a sidekick to Flash Ryan again in Puerto Rico. And when I landed from the psychic, you know, my leg put down on the floor, it slipped, and I broke my knee. You know, 
it's it's um, you can be doing something for years and years and years, and just in a split of a second, something happens that has nothing to do with you personally. Boom, and 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 things like this happen. The effect of the whiplash just got to him. I, I guess he was already hurting, or his vertebrae was already damaged. You know, stuff like that happens. And wrestlers, we don't check, <laughs> we don't get checkups all the time, but every time we are in, in pain because we're used to it. Right. So maybe something was wrong already and the kick just you know finished the job as they say or whatever but um right. uh, it was very sad um wrestling lost a really really good uh wrestler and <clears throat> and uh coach because he helped a lot of the guys and and um helped them get better at, at the craft you know yeah uh wasn't he like a second generation didn't he have family um I think he was third, actually. Uh, okay. But um, but yes, it's it. He it has a great deal of lineage uh, to the name Perro Aguayo, mm-hmm. and uh, he was amazing. Not only as, as a wrestler, but as a promoter when he did his shows and um, ring general leader of the locker room. You know, he was he was great. Right. Yeah, I, I, I wound up seeing some of his work, and and you're absolutely right. It's uh, I think um. The gentleman's name was uh, Mitsuharu uh, Misawa, um, a Japanese, big Japanese legend, wrestler, um, who recently yep. uh, took a suplex, the prize one he's taken 10 million times, and wound up pretty much dying in the ring, if okay. I'm correct. Yeah, um, it happened with a, with a friend of mine in the ring, actually, uh, <coughs> Bison Smith, who, who later on died in Puerto Rico, too. Um, it, that that's another thing. They're used to taking suplexes like <laughs> eight times or ten times every match, and just that one, you know, it, it's just something that we're. Uh, it, it could happen to any of us at any time in the wrestling. Yeah, no, absolutely. As you guys say, it's uh, it's it's not ballet, so uh, it's uh, it's definitely a dangerous sport. Uh, one second, Ricky. I have a little technical thing. Just give me one second, sir. All right. Okay, sorry about that, bud. Um, no so, what is uh, your travel plans? Are you getting back? Uh, are you doing any more traveling down to Mexico and Puerto Rico anytime soon? Well, I have a <clears throat> a couple of more dates in Puerto Rico. Uh, as of right now, I'm going to Bolivia uh, oh, wow. soon too. South yeah, America. I'm. I'm. I'm yep. Yeah. And uh, Mexico, it's in the plans. Uh, right now, I don't have a set date, but uh, but yes, I have to go back. I have to defend the the King of the Ring belt. Just trying to travel as much as I can. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be in New York again, um, Chicago, um, Kansas City in December. He does not um, stop, folks. Just, he does not stop. Well, I can't. I can't stop. I, if, if if I stop, I can get numb. <laughs> like I start getting pain if I stop. Right. I just put it that way. When a, I always say, when a wrestler stops wrestling, or when a wrestler takes times off it's when all the pain comes in yeah and when you, you start keep... feeling all the pain in your body yeah so well, i try to i'm sorry well, so well, I, another thing I, was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was gonna say i was speaking to a minute ago we were talking about um kind of the a bit of the paranoia that's kind of persisted in wrestling i think as far as what you're talking about the old school guys not wanting to teach the new school guys because you know they don't want them to kind of come up but you know i've always been a philosophy of you know rising rising tides uh raise all ships and it's like uh I, I think you know that's wrestlers throughout the years have like nope I got to keep going I can I don't care if my knee my neck is whatever I can't stop because I might lose my spot now I don't think you're necessarily in threat of that because I don't see anybody you know with any half of the training and all that that you have but um, what are your thoughts of that or from back in the day actually I'm around? I'm the other way around man I'm the other way around I since I came here I've been trying to help guys to to step up to the plate and uh, and you know, uh, in different gyms, I went with SICW when they have the gym and try to help guys over there at the Dynamo gym. I try to help guys over there. Everywhere I go, I try to help everyone to step up and to learn more because I understand that guys that know the three styles, the Japanese, Mexican, and American, there's not a lot of them. So if I can get and help guys like, like Outlaw, who I've yeah. been helping uh, uh, and – you know, and just in the air. And before that, I try to help um, uh, the Little Viking, which uh, uh, Jake Parnell, mm-hmm. and you know, just some of the new guys that wants to 
to get better at this and to grow. Uh, I even helped Jake Durden when he started. And Dirty Jake Durden. And you know how he's doing in the on the Midwest right now. So I, I'm trying to to help as much as I can. So when I say, which is going to be pretty soon, I think, uh, when, when I say I'm done, I could sit down and enjoy the matches mm -hmm. of these guys and, and think, you know, okay, wrestling is safe. There's more people that know the three styles, and there's more people who really care about wrestling, not just about them. Well, when you do, uh, if you do, or obviously it have to, has to happen someday, hang up your boots, do you, do you see yourself still staying in the business to some capacity? It seems like everyone kind of does something, maybe has a podcast or stays in production or stays in, like, developmental and helping kind of uh, mentor. Well, that you. depends on the companies. If they want me around or they know. <laughs> if right. they want me around or not. Depends on the different companies. Um, I'm I'm always going to be willing to help. Wrestling is something that I really, really do love. Sure. Uh, even though there's a lot of politics and a lot of stuff behind the scenes um, in the states um, with wrestling, there's nothing I love more than wrestling. That seems like that's you always know? been the case, though. Politics. It seems like that's been always been. I mean, wherever you go, Puerto Rico. I, it seems like it's. Yeah, I could be wrong, but it just seems like that's. He uh, can't be. He can't be perfect, man. Because if he was perfect, everybody would do it. Right. <laughs> it has to have something wrong with it, or something that the people don't like. I, in my in my part, it's just the politics. I I sure. hate uh, the politics of it. Um, I love the entertainer and the entertainment and the fans part of wrestling. Right. But the backstage stuff is what I don't like. But like I said, not everything can be perfect. Sure. Um, and and as long as I can, I will be part of wrestling inside or outside the ring. Well, and we could definitely use you, my friend. Like I said, there's there's very few in the game still that uh, with your with your pedigree. Um, and kind of speaking of your pedigree, you b before you got into wrestling, and I'm not, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but uh, you had spoken to uh, your your uh, mixed martial arts training or martial arts training prior to your getting into wrestling. Um, and I know yeah. you're still you still train and stuff now. What do you think about uh, the UFC or like the MMA product now? If you if you watch it, it's uh, well, and it's so it's very different than when I used to go to the tournaments. You know, when I go to the tournaments, it was about points and three minute rounds and whatever points you got. It defines the winner. And now it's a little bit more. Brutal. I I love I love the fighting. I hate the drama that they try to put to get the fight sold. Really? You know, so you don't it you don't appreciate the almost kind of w whatever wrestling element to it to help put the hype, hype the fights up? Yeah, but if if, if they want to be wrestling, then do wrestling. Well, you just know, that element, you don't just that see, promo aspect of, like, you know, getting asses in the seats, you know what I mean? Talking people well, into the... Well, yeah, but but it's just that sometimes it shows that it's all, you know, fake. Right. You know what I mean? Like no, it's, I it's, And <laughs> there's guys that can pull it off and there's guys that don't. I'm going to give you a piece of, um, you know, like an example. I love Rhonda. Of course. She goes to the mic and she goes, like, I'm just going to beat you up. Right, you know, right, because, right, right. Because I can and because I need to and, and I'm getting paid. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and that's all the hype she needs. Yeah. She is her own hype. And player. the other person says, no, I'm going to be the one, da 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 Okay, yeah, uh-huh, whatever. Yeah. That's it. Now, when you have guys that are, like, trying to overdo it, like, Conor I McGregor. forgot the name of this guy. Yeah, guys like that, and then they do a press conference and he wants to take over and be the... the the freaking clown of it, you know that. Well, I, don't I had on that. I had on UFC Hall of Famer Pat Militich, and I asked him about this very element of the kind of WWE ish promo style kind of entering into MMA, and he was saying it's important for these new guys to get that marketability aspect of it, not to necessarily go over the top with it, but to be able to cut a promo, take an acting class. Yeah, you know what I mean, of course, and and you need to learn how to speak, and and because. It's not it's not as easy as it, as it seems to get in front of a camera in front and when you know that there's a thousand people or, or, or whatever I'm out watching you. Right. Of course. Um, people think it's just oh get in front of the mic and talk. That's not that, no. It's, right. Especially in front of people. No. But I'm I'm not saying it's not important because everybody needs to market themselves. That's how you make money. 
Absolutely. But when you overdo it and make it look uh, fake, then you make the sport. Yeah. Look fake. There's you know like, what I mean? Almost and similar like in wrestling. There's there's an art to it. You and, know what I mean? There's an art exactly. to it. Exactly. Well, cool, my friend. Exactly. Um, I don't want to keep you too much longer, buddy. I got, I know you got a lot of stuff to do. Um, we finally, or we uh, we kind of close out our program with a particular segment we like to call the Conspiracy Triangle of Doom. It is very simple. Three questions. You can say yes or no. You can elaborate if you wish. Uh, but there are very simple three questions on some of the more popular conspiracies in American pop culture. All so, right. First question, sir. I feel like I should hang out right now. <laughs> yeah, no, you have that. You have that option. It's nothing to be scared of. <laughs> First question, sir. Do you believe in the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence? Yes. Yes. A very simple. Yes. See, very simple. That was painless, right? Question number yep. two, sir. Do you believe the official version? Of the events of November 22nd, 1963, which is the assassination of President John Kennedy. Official version being Lee Harvey Oswald fires three shots from the Texas School Book Depository. Uh, I would say no. Okay. Another very safe painless once again. Third and final question with the king of chaos, Mr. Ricky Cruz. Sir, do you believe the official version of the events of September the 11th, 2001? I don't, that one, it's a hard one. Um, I don't think it's as simple as they put it. And, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing simple to it. Right. But if you see, like, in computers, uh, there's a way that you put a type of language and it shows you the whole diagram of what happened and the people that there's a lot of things that make me think there's more to it. Right. So I would say no. Okay. Okay. Well, see, sir, that was the, that was the conspiracy triangle of doom and you survived it, sir. You survived it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. King of chaos, Ricky Cruz. You can't lose brother. Cause you are a winner. Let me tell you what, my friend, uh, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. It's also been a pleasure knowing you. You're an awesome human being. And I do hope, you continue your success in the world of wrestling. Um, if you can, sir, shout out any um, social media where we can follow you. Well, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The the name is Ricky Cruz SDL. Uh, to follow me in all of them, uh, and I have right now. I have my two pages full on, on Facebook. I'm, I'm starting to create a third one, and I have my fan page, which is Ricky Cruz Fans. So you can follow me there. And you can see me at SICW, Dynamo Pro. You can see me at GWF. You can see me at New Great Wrestling. You can see me at Galley Wrestling. You can see me in WWL in Puerto Rico. So if you like indie wrestling, if you like wrestling, just follow all these companies and you can see me there. Ladies and gentlemen, there's, there you have it right there. The champ, the king of chaos, Ricky Cruz. My friend, thank you so much and uh, continue success, my friend. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. You too, buddy. Ricky Cruz with us, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. We always have more to come. Thank you for listening to It's Me Speaking to You. Please spread the word and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And stay tuned for more conversations with a variety of guests on a variety of subjects.